Hi, welcome to our bookstore. I can see you have quite a few books you'd like to buy. Okay, and um, I basically live here, so is it alright if I kind of get you a little familiarized with some of them? Um, you obviously picked them because you like them, but, um, sorry, I have to be quiet. Um, I don't know if there's maybe some comments or, um, things I know about the book that might help. Um, and we do have bookstore cats, so they're gonna be running around. Um, but let's take a look at what you have and see if um, I can help you out a little bit with maybe seeing which one you want to start with, what makes you most excited, and all that. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. The first one you picked, Stephen King. And I'm not much for scary stories. Um, I get scared easily. <laughs> I can take scary movies now, but uh, sitting with a book that kind of runs your brain for a while, as books tend to do, I can't really focus on darkness for that long. <laughs> but he is an excellent writer. Um, obviously you didn't get one of his novels, you got on writing which is kind of like his manifesto. Um, it's basically half, I can kind of read the back and it'll tell you, but um, it's part him encouraging young writers and partly an autobiography. It says, part memoir, part master class by one of the best-selling authors of all time. This superb volume is a revealing and practical view of the writer's craft. Compri comprising the basic tools of the trade every writer must have. King's advice is grounded in his vivid memories from childhood, through his emergence as a writer, from his struggling early career, to his widely reported near-fatal accident in 1999, and how the inextricable link between writing and living spurred his recovery. Brilliantly structured, friendly and inspiring, on writing will empower and entertain everyone who reads it, fans, writers, and anyone else who loves a great story well told. He's undeniably a very good author. Um, the word friendly that they used is the thing that I did get out of this. He's speaking to you like someone, like he's your uncle and he's known you for years and he loves you and he wants you to do well. Um, it's very personal, is the kind of the tone I got from this. So, this is a great one if you want to try to write for, you know, fun, professional, or otherwise, and get a, to know a little bit about one of America's best selling authors. Um, this one, and I really can't believe that you picked this. Sorry, I think I'm disturbing other people, so I'm going to get kind of close. Um, The Third Policeman by Flan O'Brien. Nobody has picked this yet. Uh, and I know we only have a couple copies, but this is one of my favorite books. It might be my favorite. Um, it's almost impossible to describe. There's, I like magical realism where they take the real world and, you know, kind of add um, elements of obviously magic and kind of bend the rules of physics. Uh, but this goes beyond that. <laughs> this turns reality and logic and everything else up on its head. Um, I guess I'll read the back to try to give you a little bit of an understanding because there is a story that's told, but 
what I was left with was more the um, really, really impressive twist of the imagination and of the world as we know it. Um, says, the third policeman is Flann O'Brien's brilliant comic novel about the nature of time, death, and existence. Told by a narrator who has committed a botched robbery and brutal murder, the novel follows him and his adventures in a two-dimensional police station where, through the writings of the scientist slash philosopher, philosopher DeSelby, he is introduced to, quote-unquote, atomic theory and its relation to bicycles. The existence of eternity, which turns out to be which turns out to be just down the road, and to Selby's view that the earth is not round, but sausage-shaped. With the help of his newly discovered soul named Joe, he grapples with the riddles and contradictions that three eccentric policemen present to him. So, with that little warning and blurb, um, I would say... Congratulations on picking a book that you will never forget, <laughs> and um, you will enjoy this. I might say go for it first if you want something that's um, really entertaining, and uh, it is darkly comical. So, excellent, excellent. Um, speaking of magical realism... Love in the Time of Cholera. Um, this book, and obviously uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez is known for A Hundred Years of Solitude and a, a, a few other works, um, which I believe Bill Clinton said was his favorite book. I don't know why I know that, but I do. And um, this book is like the third policeman light. <laughs> it definitely bends the laws of physics as it tells its story, but not quite so brutally. <laughs> it, uh, it's beautifully, beautifully done. Um, I recommend the movie as well. The movie did a very good job of representing the works in here. Um, basically, it kind of explains how love can be something incredibly fragile and it can also be something um, indestructible all at the same time. So this is a good one for the romantic and uh, also once again the magical realism is an excellent touch. It's one of my favorite tools writers can use. Like for instance, this doesn't ruin it, but um, when the main character is lovesick, uh, his heart's been broken, he walks around town aimlessly eating flowers, like all the flowers off of the bushes and everything, um, it's kind of extreme, it's kind of <laughs> a weird way to react, but that's really cool. Um, this is Meditation by Osho. And this book will seriously help you with stress. If you have anxiety, um, stress, or anything, meditation can fit into anybody's life. It doesn't matter what religion you are. It's not a religion in and of itself. It obviously has roots in many religions, but um, really it's a form of prayer if you have to look at it that way. Um, it's changed my life. Um, because instead of one of my favorite things about meditation is that um, if your mind wanders to something stressful you don't reprimand it you simply gently let it go and it doesn't matter how many times that happens you're just supposed to understand and be patient with yourself and there's no right or wrong way to do it but even for a novice like myself, I still definitely am uh, spending five to ten minutes meditating.
feels like I just gave my brain like an ice cream sundae. It, it feels very relaxed and um, it definitely changes your perspective. Uh, the back of this one says, In Buddhist time, dynamic methods of meditation were not needed. People were more relaxed and their lives were simpler. I don't know if I agree, but <laughs> that's a pretty bold statement, but we'll continue. Now life moves at a much faster pace, which creates much more stress and tension. Just sitting directly in silent meditation is not so easy. In this essential meditation handbook for the 21st century, Osho turns the traditional notion of meditation practice on its head. Meditation, the first and last freedom, shows that meditation is not a spiritual discipline separate from everyday life in the real world. In essence, it is simply the art of being aware of what is going on inside and around us. As we acquire the knack, meditation can be our companion wherever we are, at work, at play, at rest. This contains step-by-step -step guides to um, aid you in kind of getting started. Meditation's in and of itself very simplistic, but you kind of still need directions on how to go about it. Sorry, my hair is being weird. Um, there's a cat on my book. This next one is... I'm hesitant to say because I am partial to Harry Potter, but it might be my favorite fantasy. Um, and it is part of a trilogy. Wicked. Now probably better known for the Broadway play. Uh than the actual book. I read the book before the play was made. Um, one of my friends in college just said, you need to read this, um, and also had me listen to the music, and it was amazing. So I'm guessing you have an idea that this is the story of the Wicked Witch. <laughs> Sorry. The story of the Wicked Witch retold um, with more sympathy for her, obviously, and kind of... Uh, Elphaba is her name. It's uh, very beautifully done. Um, I love, actually, he's got a few more books. Oh, look, you, you have another one. Um, I, he's one of my favorite authors, Gregory Maguire. Um, this is a, the first part of a trilogy. I believe after its success, um, the, the novel and the Broadway play, he went back and added um, two more books. And... Out of Oz, and The Cowardly Lion, I know, is the main protagonist in another one. I need to revisit these. This is an excellent book in and of itself, if you do just want to read this one. But I encourage you to read all three. Um, the back says, When Dorothy triumphed over the Wicked Witch of the West in L. Frank Baum's classic tale, we heard only her side of the story. But what about her arch nemesis, the mysterious witch? Where did she come from? How did she become so wicked? And what is the true nature of evil? Gregory Maguire creates a fantasy world so rich and vivid that we will never look at Oz the same way again. Wicked is about a land where animals talk and strive to be treated like first-class citizens. Munchkinlanders seek the comfort of middle-class stability, and the tin man becomes a victim of domestic violence. And then there is the little green-skinned girl named Elphaba, who will grow up to become the infamous Wicked Witch of the West, a smart, prickly, and misunderstood creature who challenges all her preconceived notions about the nature of good and evil. Um, well, that's very true surprised at uh, how adult this content was, um, so I wouldn't hand this to uh, a young child or read it to them. Um, it's fairly sexualized and uh, it, it builds and it adds to the story, but um, definitely for adults. It's not a children's fairy tale, so I would have them stick to the original Wizard of Oz until they're older. <laughs> Um, along that same theme, Gregory Maguire, Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister. 
This one is a little bit um, 